In this video, we're going to solve this problem. We have a 3x3 three three matrix. We just proved that each eigenspace was a subspace. So now what we want to do is find a basis for that subspace. So we'll find all eigenvalues and then find a basis for each of the eigenspace. All right. We need the characteristic polynomial. Since we have a 3 by 3 matrix, it's going to be the determinant of A minus X I3. So I'm going to take my A and subtract X's from the diagonal. Let me use the bars for determinants. So I'm going to get the determinant of this matrix. Um, in these matrices, when you're trying to find the determinants, you're allowed to expand, you're allowed to do row operations, you can do whatever you did for regular determinants. So in this case, I really like this column, so I'm going to expand along it. So plus, minus, plus, I'm going to get 2 minus x, this is particularly awesome because not only do I not need to do tons of expansion and tons of computation, but I'm going to get one of the factors of my characteristic polynomial, so I will not have to completely factor it. It's going to be partially factored already. Then I have minus x minus 2, 1, 3 minus x. Now this is a bit harder to see. But one thing I notice is if I add those two rows, what happens if I add those two rows? I get 1 minus x and y minus x. Let's do that. So I'm going to take, and it doesn't really matter which one you take, so row 1 plus row 2, and I'll put it in row 1. So I'm going to get 1 minus x, 1 minus x, 1, 3 minus x. Now I can factor 1 minus x. I'm sorry, I forgot my factor. Let me... I'm sorry, it's a bit rough here. Uh, I'm going to factor 1 minus x. So I had 2 minus x from 4, and now we'll factor 1 minus x. I'll have 1, 1, 1, 3 minus x. So I already have two factors of my characteristic polynomials. I already know that 2 is going to be an eigenvalue and 1 will be an eigenvalue. And I need to figure out what that third linear term will be. And I'm going to get 3 minus x minus 1. So I'm going to get 2 minus x squared 1 minus x. So my eigenvalues will be when p of a x is 0. So I get x equals 2. Sorry, I'm going to try to use lambda for eigenvalues and x for the polynomial. Lambda equals 2 or lambda equals 1. All right, so we have two eigenvalues. That means we have two different eigenspaces, and I'm going to need a basis for each. Alright, 
right, so let's start with lambda equals 2. So again, an eigenvector here would be an element of the null space of A minus lambda i. So let's find that matrix. Um, I don't remember A, but it's the same as this matrix if I put x equals 0. So I'll get 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 0, 3, minus 2 on the diagonal. I'm subtracting them. So that's the matrix whose eigenspaces I'm looking for. I'm looking for a basis for it. So I'm going to reduce this. All the rows are multiple of the first one, or of any of them. Sorry, with this zero. So I have two free variables, the second and the third. So I'm going to use S for this one, T for that one. minus t from the first equation, y is s, and z is t. Now I'm going to split it into the parts which have s and the part which has a t in it. So that equation gives you everything in the null space. We're looking for a basis for it. So that's going to turn out to be those two vectors in front of the parameters. So that's the null space of a minus 2i3. So a basis for lambda equals 2. could be 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. Now, as you know, bases are not usually unique. So here, that's one answer. You could multiply these or take a linear combination of them. But this is the one that comes out most naturally out of the reduction of the matrix A. So I expect most of you to get exactly the same one as me, maybe with the vectors um, in a different order. All right, so that's a basis for the eigenspace of A with lambda equals 2. Let's do lambda equals 1. element of the eigen uh, null space of a minus 1 i3. Now I've erased my matrix, so let's take my memory sheet. So minus, um, wait, a was 0, 
come on, there's two, one, two, one, one, zero, three, minus um, one, so perfect, one's on the diagonal. So this matrix will give us the eigenspace once I reduce it. So let me reduce So the third row is going to disappear, and then if I add these, I'll get 0, 1, minus 1. So here is the reduction. Um, this time I only have one free variable. y plus z is 0, so y is the same as z, and then z is our free variable, so I'll call it s. That means I get minus 2, 1, 1 times s. That's going to be my basis vector. So basis for lambda equals 1 will be minus 2, 1, 1. That's the basis for the eigenspace of A corresponding to lambda equals 1. 